This video is part of the series to accompany discrete mathematics and functional programming. I'm Thomas Van Drunen. In introducing this video, I'm torn on whether to warn you that it's hard or to assure you that it's actually not that bad. The topic, power sets, does require you to think in a new way, at least a little bit and the terminology and notation can be intimidating. Moreover, there are some problems involving power sets later in the book that are truly inherently difficult. That said, power sets really aren't as bad as they sound once you get used to them, once you get past the intimidation factor. So I encourage you to watch this video and read the section and do the exercises with an open mind. If you're willing to think in new ways and give it a second or third try if necessary, you'll get this. We'll start with a story. Andrew, Bella, Carla, and Dirk were visiting their grandma. Before going home, grandma took out her camera to get a picture of them. After she got a picture of all of them, she decided she'd also like a picture of just the boys and another of just the girls. Then she thought she might like one of each grandkid individually. Then just the older two. Then just the younger two. And pretty soon she had taken pictures of every combination. Last of all, she decided to take a picture of just the background in case she needed to start from scratch when photoshopping the results. Here's the point. You can think of each photo as a set, since in each picture there is a subset of the grandkids. So what if we take the collection of all the pictures Grandma took? What we have then is the set of all sets of grandkids. Keep in mind that the set of all the grandkids is a subset of itself. The empty set is also a subset. So this is what a power set is. The power set of a set is the set of all subsets of the original set. In the formal definition, note that the thing we're defining is a set, and the elements in that set are themselves sets. From my experience teaching this, I found that the phrase set of sets can throw students off. For something to be a set of sets, doesn't mean it's somehow a grander or more important set. It just means that its elements are sets. When you hear set of sets, you should think box of boxes, not king of kings. Of course, you're already primed for this in ML with the idea of a list of lists. At this point, make sure you are clear about the difference between a value, a list containing that value, and a list containing a list containing that value. Remember also there's an important difference between an empty list and a list containing an empty list. The list containing an empty list is not itself empty. In the case of the power set of the set 1, 2, 3, we have the set 1, 2, 3 itself. It's a subset of itself, and so it's an element of its own power set. The set 1, 2, the set 2, 3, the set 1, 3, the individual elements of the set 1, 2, 3, each in their own set, and the empty set. Let's talk about some things that make power sets different and therefore difficult for beginners to think about. We've already mentioned that the elements of a power set are themselves sets. Second, power sets come from a different universe. If we have some set X of elements drawn from the universal set U, then the set X is itself an element of a different universal set. In fact, the universe that it's drawn from is the power set of the original universal set. The power set of X is itself 
a subset of the power set of the original universal set. Third, if some set A has an element little a, then notice that the set containing only little a is a subset of big A, and hence an element of the power set of A. That proposition there is an if and only if. It means that those two things are equivalent to each other. Two more equivalences. A being a subset of B is equivalent to A being an element of the power set of B. That's also equivalent to the power set of A being a subset of the power set of B. I want to make a distinction between points 4 and 5 here, though. Point 4 comes immediately from the definition of power set. That's simply what the power set of B means, since it is the set of all subsets of B. I wouldn't consider point 5 to come immediately from the definition of power set. It takes more work. The difference here is that point 4 needs no proof. It's really just a rephrasing of the definition. We will prove point 5 in section 4.9. For points 6 and 7, notice that any set is a subset of itself, and the empty set is a subset of anything. Thus, for any set A, it is an element of its own power set, and the empty set is an element of its power set, in fact, of any power set. This might be a good time to read and think about exercise 2.4.5, whether or not the power set of the empty set is itself the empty set. One of the most important ways for you to exercise your understanding of power sets is to work through how one would compute the power set from a set. Specifically, let's suppose we represented a set using a list. We want to write a function that will compute a list that represents the power set of that list, as I'll demonstrate here. I had already entered the code for the power set function into the interpreter for demonstration purposes. I'm not showing you the code because that's what you're going to do in exercises 2.4.14 and 15. But notice the result. We gave the power set function an int list, and it gives us back an int list list, that is, a list of lists of ints. In the same way, the power set of a set of integers would be a set of sets of integers. Again, look carefully and you'll see that all of the lists in this list of lists are the lists you can make from the elements of the original list, as long as you don't want lists with the same numbers but different order. Although it's your responsibility to write this function, let's think through the process together. I'm going to turn the lights off for effect. Suppose we have some list with three elements. To make it general, I'm calling them A, B, and C. Consider the set we'd get if we removed element little a from set A. That gives us the set B, C. What's its power set? Well, it's the set that contains the sets B, C, B by itself, C by itself, and the empty set. Here's where the notation gets complicated, but don't let that phase you. Take it in parts. Consider the set whose elements are all the sets you could make by adding the element little a to a set from that previous power set. That is, capital C is ranging over all the sets in the power set of set a minus little a. Capital C ranges over the sets b c, b, c, and empty. If we add a little a to each of those sets, we get the sets abc, ab, ac, and a. We get the set abc by adding element a to set bc. We get the set ab by adding a to the set containing just b. We get the set ac by adding a to the set containing just c. And we get the set containing just a by adding a to the empty set. Now, what's the power set of the original set a? It's the set that contains the sets 
ABC, AB, AC, A, BC, B, C, and empty. What's so special about that? Hey, that's just the two previous sets we looked at union together. The first four sets we listed in the power set of A come from that set with the funny notation. That is, element A joined back to each set in the power set of set A minus element A. The last four sets are just the sets in the power set of set A minus element A. Notice that these two sets make a partition of set A. Lights, please. So how do you compute a power set? Here's the big picture and a big push towards the solution of exercises 2.4.14 and 15. Pick an element from the set A. By the way, if set A is represented by a list, you may as well pick the first, or head, element. Find the power set of what's left of set A. I hope that sounds like a recursive call. Now, add the element you removed back into every set in the power set you computed in step two. Finally, combine the results of parts two and three. One thing that's not obvious is how to do step three. How do you add an element to each set in a set, or to each list in a list? Well, you're at a helper function. That's where exercise 2.4.14 comes in. It asks you to write a function called add to each. Again, I'm not showing the code, but I'll show you what it's supposed to do. Let's suppose we want to add four to each element in the list containing the list containing one, two, and the empty list, and the list containing five, six, seven, and the list containing just 12. That gives us the list of lists that has the list 412, the list 4, which we got by adding 4 to the empty list, the list 4567, and the list 412. And that is adding 4 to each list in the list of lists. I have a son who hates getting his hair washed. After every shampoo, I always ask him, that wasn't so bad, was it? And he always admits it wasn't so bad. But he's only three, so he might just be saying that because they can't help following leading questions. Now you've seen power sets. And I hope it wasn't so bad. But if it was, go get some ice cream and try it again.